Hey YouTube, this lighting may not be the best, so sorry, sun's behind me, it's Florida. Um, what we're going to do today, we've got, uh, got the golf cart project going on. I have built a bunch of battery packs. I need to build some more. Um, and what I need to do is I need to put some of these packs down in here where these batteries are. So here's one battery's gone. I need to get rid of this battery right here so that I can put some more packs right there. This battery is not doing anything except holding this right here. So I just need to build something right in here. I'm thinking a piece of clear plastic, Lexan acrylic, whatever I have left over, picked up from Home Depot probably a long time ago. I got a bunch of stuff laying around. Um, build a little bracket coming off of here, going here, a uh, piece of plastic, take some of these, bolt them to the plastic. They'll give me my attachment points. Um, then I'll take uh, this battery here, which is actually working still, um, and uh, I'm going to move these connections to this battery, which is still a good battery, but it's not doing anything, and then that'll free up this spot here. Then uh, when I get done with all that, I'll be able to uh, do the same thing on the other side, take out those batteries. That'll give me all my space. Once I get four sets of packs all built up, I'll be able to pull out these batteries right here because then I won't even need those and that'll free up that space for chargers, controllers, stuff like that. So anyway, that's today's project. Uh, let's get going. Okay, so what's the golden rule here? You uh, measure twice and cut once, right? I did find some plastic in my pile and I don't know what it was and I wish I did. Um, I've gotten some acrylic recently and it did not cut nor drill like this stuff I used on the golf cart. I'd like to go back and find out what that sticker says, but uh, it, yeah, this stuff that I used, it just, it was probably Lexan. It drilled nicely, it cut nicely, it didn't crack or break or anything else. Uh, some of the stuff I've gotten recently does. So now I got my pieces cut. I can uh, drill my hole in the aluminum, then put the plastic up there and mark it by sticking the drill bit back through the holes I just made, and then uh, drill those by hand. That's not a big deal. Um, then bolt it in place. Now with it bolted in place, I can take measurements from where it actually is. So this is the rear bracket here, it's just a piece of steel um, cutting on the bandsaw there. And I put the steel up there figured out where I needed holes in the plastic, drilled the holes, and then put the piece of steel back up there, marked the holes with the drill bit, and then took them over to the milling machine to drill the holes all the way through. You don't want to have to drill steel if by hand if you don't have to. Um, if you can, if you have to, step drill it, start out with a real small bit. Uh, these are quarter inch bolts, so I was able to just use a quarter inch bit and put it right in there. Now something interesting you'll notice here is uh, I keep taking the handles off and putting them on and taking them off and putting them on. Keep your handles on your drill press or your mill loose enough that you can just unscrew them by hand, but you want them snug enough to where they don't flop around. If they flop around, it's going to wall out the hole and then you're going to have a problem. If you can, um, but when you go to do a project, if it's in your way, just unscrew it and move it off to the side until you finish your hole. Um, now, with this here, with when I have everything bolted in place, I can take measurements and find out what my spacing is going to be, because I have to put a spacer in there. I can't just put a long bolt in there. There's nothing underneath it. So I'll make a spacer um, and uh, put that in there. And there's going to be a little bit of foreshadowing here because that didn't work and you're gonna find that out in just a minute so it got a little late last night didn't quite finish uh, today's another day um, got the uh, the piece in here it's not a hundred percent something's not quite right this right here something is hitting so we got to figure out what it is something underneath the seat is hitting on this not quite wanting it to go down all the way um, got a couple ideas on how to figure out what that is because you sort of have to look underneath here where you can't see once everything's closed so but uh, we're gonna finish that up I'm going to put in the, um, uh, the, the the connectors in here so we can make this our new connection point for the batteries 
and hopefully we'll get rid of this big thing today. See how it goes. Good luck. Now here's a trick that I learned a while back. Use some child's modeling clay and put it any place that you think something is going to be hitting. Then I could put the seat down and wherever the clay uh, pushed into, I could see that that's where it was touching. Um, so this, just a piece of copper pipe, uh, figured out what I needed for a spacer, put the copper pipe in there, and uh, now that's done. Nothing's hitting anymore. So next I need to make little miniature bus bars for the battery to connect to. I'm going to put those here, drill in the holes you can see there in the, uh, in the plastic. So I'll take the one from the battery that was just holding wires and I'll move it first. So that was a nice feeling to have that step done. And then I will uh, mark where everything else is going to go and I'll put some more in there. I'll end up with uh, two of those in there this time and then later on it'll become four. So here's the other one. Just using a tape measure to get an idea of what four spacings would be so that it looks somewhat organized when I get done. Okay, now I need to move around where the wires are because I'm going to different batteries now. And one of the things I need to do is uh, I'll, I'll be making up some new cables here in just a minute. Once I get everything decided where it's going to be, then I can measure those and uh, put those in. So when I went and cut that copper before, uh, here's some more copper pipe. This is a neat little trick. Instead of buying expensive lugs, if you can get access to some copper pipe, cut it to the length that you think you're going to need, um, and then you can drill your holes in there. If you wanted to get fancy, what I should have done is gone over to the grinder and those two sharp corners, I could have rounded those out so they look more like store-bought copper lugs. But I just took a piece of copper pipe that's the size of the cable I'm going to be using, and that's why I had that cable sitting there. You can see me measuring it there. Um, cut it to length, cut it off, the end is smashed like a copper lug, and then if you can go to Harbor Freight, if you've got the means to get one of these hydraulic crimpers, they're not expensive, I highly, highly recommend those. It will take any kind of job that could be a potential hassle and turn it into something that is very easy. But now that I got my cables made up, I can route those, screw those down to where they belong, and here in just a minute, I will be done. All right, there you go. I think it was a success. We've got the uh, we got our bar in here uh, to the mounting points. I'll be able to double that up for the next set of batteries. Have a big hole where another battery used to be, and uh, plenty of room to put stuff. Uh, we'll put some more of these battery packs in there, and I know what to do over here on this side. I can just duplicate the exact same thing and get rid of another set of batteries, and. Um, four holes will give me my 48 volts that I need for battery packs and we are well on our way and at the same time driving the golf cart so if you like the video thanks subscribe tell your friends give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you next time get out there and make something